Hello everyone and welcome to this playthrough of Devil May Cry the Bloody Palace miniature game slash board game. The solo playthrough of the one player mode you might have seen the unboxing that I did very recently. So we're going to give the game a go in the most basic setup. One player where you're simply doing a score attack, you're trying to get as much stylish points as possible by the time you make it to the boss. Already set up and ready to go. I did one little test battle to try and make sure that I understand the basic concepts of the rules but this is not a how to play. It's more a kind of learning to play as we go and for this inaugural attempt we're going to play as Nero because he's kind of the main character of Devil May Cry 5 although you do obviously play as V and Dante as well. Uh, he's going to be there. It might not be as easy to see on camera but all the bases for all the miniatures have a raised section. This is to show you their front facing and two side facings and that's important for combat. But in general we're wanting to score style points starting here to go all the way around the outside of the board which probably won't happen in a solo mode but you want to get up to triple S style and then it caps out at 100 possible points but uh, for the first game probably not going to make it that far. You set up a bloody palace adventure based on the number of players so if you're playing one player you choose one of the two possible one player start levels you choose one of the three possible level one encounters and then you go for one of the three possible level two encounters and then you have the boss that's the same you know, the base game, not included any of the expansion stuff to start with just so we're dealing with the basics. And then over here we have our character board, we're playing as Nero, he's got move 6, health 6. This is his deck of new skills he can purchase with red orbs between floors that we'll cover when we actually get between floors. These are his four basic attacks. So he's got a name shot with his pistol and he's got a couple of sword attacks and then he has overture which is one of the hand upgrades he can get and if you do use that it flips over till the end of combat because it, it breaks. But usually what happens with basic attacks is they come back to be used every single turn whereas abilities you draw from your deck get discarded and we'll be drawing five of them or up to five if we don't have five in our hand and that's what you use to combo enemies to get as big a combo as possible and based on how big the combo is, getting closer here, that's how many points you score. So if you do a four combo it only scores one point. You've got to be very very good with your combos. Finishers and stuff also make you get more points. It might sound a little bit confusing, it's actually surprisingly simple and you just you chain your attack starting here. Uh, I've already got the enemy set up for what I know is the first encounter. So we'll just get started. It's, it's surprisingly easy to follow once we're in. Uh, might as well just turn over the start level. So this is what we have. We can start in any one of those central hexes that are highlighted. There is four red impusas which is the red orb dropping guys, they're a little bit tankier but they drop more red orbs when they die. We draw two achievement cards that are potentially gettable for the level. I'm not actually sure if achievements carry between floors or not and it tells you to remove all the challenging achievements, I've already done that. So what this means is we just copy this layout, Nero can be in any of those squares and then we put these enemies where they are, I'll do that in a second to set them up fully. And we also draw ourselves an initial hand as well, so since we're playing solo we can just have a little look. We've got Colour Up, which is discard this card when making a ranged attack to do more damage. Exceed, which is actually more damage in general. We've got a Blade Arc, which is a blue chain. Another aimed shot. Grey slash silver chains are colourless. They can be... They, they carry across, they can be any colour, they just take whatever colour. And another aimed shot, so that's the hand we're going to use. Let's get this set up and, oh, we also have to draw the two achievement cards as well. I've already shuffled these ahead of time. Reaper, claim this if you slay at least two enemies during your turn. So it'll give you three style points. Which you score at the end of the game, you don't store them instantly. And, what's this? Sharpshire, claim this if you hit at least three different enemies with ranged attacks during your turn. Thanks to that initial draw, that's possible. Apologies for the construction noise you can probably hear outside, but we've got the fight set up. Here's the stack card for the Red Impusa. They attack in their frontal arc, and you draw a, a single behavior card, and then they all react. They've got seven health, and they drop three single red orbs when they die. So we'll put that to one side with the combat up here. We're not going to get to that part of the score track anyway. Normally you would hold your hand, but because I'm holding the camera, I've just got it spread out here. That's our, our current hand. Now you don't necessarily want to use all your cards in a turn. Also, I'm going to change where Nero starts. I'm going to start him here. That's one of the squares you can start in. You don't want to necessarily spend all the cards in your hand. You can discard them 
when it's the enemy turn to negate damage by dodging. Each card has a dodge value on the bottom there, so that would dodge one damage. And then above that is a, a shift, it's called, I think. Oh, a step, sorry, a step. Before or after an attack, you can discard a card to go up to its step value. And that's outside of the one single movement you're allowed to make in a turn up to your move value. Nero's a six, so that means he can move six. And then that's it, or he can attack, and then he can move. What you can't do is move like three, attack, and then move your other three. You, you are allowed one move action outside of stepping. So he's going to use his move action. He's going to go one, two, three. And he's going to put his front arc facing this Impusa here. And then we can start comboing to kill him. Keeping in mind that we want to hit at least three things to get sharpshooter scored. Gunshots are 360. So it doesn't matter which way he's facing. He can shoot in any direction because in the game shooting auto attacks essentially. So what we could do is let's see add two to a ranged attack we probably want to save that we could immediately get the achievement which i think we're going to do so we're going to chain aim shot into aimed shot into aimed shot on three different targets we'll shoot this one that one and this one again because it's 360 it doesn't matter so they all just take one damage and that scores us sharpshooter now you don't bank this now you bank it at the end of the game so I'll just put it to one side but then we actually have to start attacking properly so we're gonna do a rapid swing on the enemy in front of us it does one damage it knocks them back and we're allowed to follow if we want so we'll push the Impusa there we're going to follow it up. It's done another one damage to him. So we'll put that there. That's two out of seven health. It's not a lot of damage. And the chain has also become blue at this point. So we can do Blade Arc, which is one of the cards we drew. Now it hits a little bit of a strange arc. So it would only do one damage to the Impusa we just moved towards again. But it knocks them back as well. So we'll do that. If it was hitting slightly to his left, it would do two damage, because it's kind of like he's cutting sideways. But he'll hit that again, and that becomes three total damage to this Impusa. He'll follow it up again. Now, because it's a blue chain, the only other thing you could do is Overture, and Overture is a once per level. But that would take him to six cards, which would score three points. Sure. We'll do Overture. That's two more damage for a total of five. Smack dab there. And that's where we'll choose to bank our combo and score it. So we used one, two, three, four, five, six. We go here. If you use six cards, you score three points. So you go one, two, three. We're on the D board. Three points into the D board. We, use, uh, we save these two cards. Any basic attack cards go back down here and basic attack cards are marked with those symbols. The symbols vary per character. Overture however turns over and is unusable now because it was a devil breaker that broke and these ones that we spent go into a discard pile and we only go back to a discard pile if we run out of other cards or if the fight ends. Now we go into the enemy phase we still have two cards that we can use to negate damage which is just as well because the impusas might be dangerous. Let's draw their behavior card and see what they do. Move each raid Impusa three hexes towards the nearest hunter, then make this attack. Okay? So he's obviously right there, so he's just going to turn and face Nero and do the attack. One, two, three. He's going to go there. One, two, well, one, two, three, I guess. Maybe face that way. He's coming to get you. And one, two, three. So, this one is attacking Nero for two damage. He'll discard Exceed which counters the two damage so it does nothing and then the other one is also going to attack him for two damage he'll discard color up which only blocks one so he does take one damage and we will be fighting enemies that can drop health later on but these guys don't the other two can't reach him so this just goes on the bottom of their AI deck and that is how a turn plays out and now I need to draw five more cards so here's the new hand Aim shot, split, blade strike, blade arc, aerial strike, and we still have three out of the four of our basic attacks to do as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is, well actually, you know what, 
He's going to use his move, but he's just going to turn, which I think counts as movement. I actually don't recall if turning counts, but we're going to turn and that's all he's going to do anyway. And then he's going to fire two aim shots to start this combo, the basic one and this one, and he's hitting the one with five health, taking him to seven damage, so he is dead. And Pussas drop three red orbs when they die, three of these. Now you have to put at least one on every hex that the monster occupied. Again, obviously these are one hex, so it doesn't matter. Larger enemies, they're like three hexes, and then the big guys are like seven or eight. So he's going to drop one there, and then as far as I can tell, you can count the the other just having landed on the adjacent hex that Nero is currently occupying. So he's going to pick up those two and bank them, which we'll use to buy new cards when the combat is over. But the combo isn't over though, so. Then we're going to use High Roller on the Impusa he's facing. It's one damage and also stuns them so they wouldn't get a turn. I don't think the stun's going to matter, but this is also one of the Impusas that already had one damage, I believe. So he's got two damage now, and that opens up a green aerial combo for us. So we're going to do aerial strike. After making this attack, move up to two hexes, and it does two more damage, taking him to four in total. So we can move two hexes. Do we want to move two hexes? Uh, no, because we want to finish him off. I think. No, we're just we're just going to stay there, and we're going to end the combo with split. You'll notice there's no chain coming out the other end of that, it's because this is a combo finisher. That's why it does so much damage. You must claim your combo after playing this card. When you do, double the style points you score. Boom! That's four damage. More than enough to murderize this Im red Impusa as well. So he's going to go splat. He's going to drop one on the square he was occupying, and Nero is going to pick up the other two automatically because they landed on his square. Again, might not be right about that, but that's how I read the rules. So this scores, it's five cards only. Five cards scores two, but we double it because of that to four. So one, two, three, four. We're almost into the sea. Almost. So that's not too bad. That's obviously banked. We have two cards that we can't use. And, oh, we didn't use Rapid Swing either, but it doesn't really matter. So our basic cards, again, they come back. These get discarded. And that means we use the other two for defense. Oops. We use defense when the monsters come to kill us. We could also have just discarded one there to shift onto one of the red orbs. Not gonna bother if that stun token isn't required. Let's pull the other AI, see what they're doing. Close in, move each resident boost of three hexes towards the nearest hunter, shuffle the deck after returning this card to the bottom. Okay, three hexes towards the nearest hunter. I don't know what happens if a monster walks on a red orb. So, I guess we'll just say it shifts it. I, I, I don't actually know what that does. He's gonna move right into Nero's face, but they don't attack this turn. They do however have an attack, or a potential to attack. So this goes on the bottom, but then I have to shuffle those, I'll do that when I do a break. So we have two cards in our hand, unlike last time when we had zero. We can discard these if we want, or we can keep them, which means we would only draw three. Or uh, we could do a blue combo. That's not too bad. Maybe make this work. We'll hold on to them. So that means we're drawing three cards. Do that on camera. Another blue one, that's good. Two. Another exceed for more damage. That's when he's revving his sword. And then finally, Strategize. Discard this card during your turn to go through your deck and discard pile and add a single card to your hand. Okay. Oh, you can use that to defend against three. That's really good. All right. Let me shuffle that AI deck and we'll do our next turn. All right. So there's our hand. I have a plan. Nero's going to move one, two, turn and face. He stepped on this hex, so he picked up that red orb. Any red orbs you don't have picked up when the battle end, I think, just get discarded, honestly. So... From there, he can do some stuff, and that's what he's going to do. He's going to play Exceed, so we put this next to his board. While it's there, melee attacks, Nero does do one additional damage, and it disappears at the end of the turn. So we'll just put that there. It's in effect. He's doing plus one melee damage. Gun doesn't count. Then he's going to do Rapid Swing to start a combo, which is his basic attack. It just does one damage, although it actually does two, and pushes back, which is the thing we want. So let me just pick those up. I don't know again what to do with that one, but he's going to push that one there. 
It's going to face there. Uh, it's slightly misplaced actually. Uh, let's see. We want to go all in on this turn. No, that's okay. No, we can make this work actually. We can make this work. We do less damage than I expected, but because I want to push him back again. So we'll do a blade arc. Unfortunately, it's only going to hit the one in front of me again, but it's going to go do two damage because we normally do one, which brings him to four damage in total. Let's just get that placed. And it's going to push him back again. So they're kind of adjacent to each other, which is what I wanted. He's going to move in there. So that's four damage there. I forgot where that was. Probably there. Nero's got one damage. And there is when we can start doing fun stuff. We'll put in a swing wide, which is going to do two damage, remember. So it's going to do two damage and two damage because it does it to his front arc, his left arc, and his right arc. So that's four, five, six on the left in Pusa. Like that. And that brings three in total to this one. But we're not done yet. So after that, we're going to blade strike his front arc, which would normally do two, but it does three. So it takes him up to six. Don't have another number three handy, so let's just do a five and a one. So it's going to do six to that one. So they both have one health left. Um, but we're on a blue chain, so unfortunately I can't kill them both this turn. So we'll just use the aim shot, because it can link in. We'll kill this one and say goodbye. And then pick up two out of the three that he drops, because one has to go on his square. And say thank you very much. We will bank this five combo, so it's only two points. I don't think you can really exceed. So just two points, takes us to nine out of a potential 100. Not particularly super stylish. You only go down if you ever go to zero HP, incidentally. So again, basic cards. They come back. These get discarded. So does this, because we used it. We're left with strategize, which means we can block three damage. So pretty much regardless of what we draw here. For the AI, I'm pretty sure we can block it. Yeah, it's hitting for three. Jason the Hunter makes this attack move everyone else towards them, there's no one else. So we're going to discard strategize to block the three damage that Nero would have taken from that attack. Simple as that, that goes back at the bottom of the deck. And then Nero is going to murder this thing because it's only got one health left. We could technically just do an aim shot. Uh, I don't know if you, you can overkill an enemy, if you know what I mean. We have no cards, so this is a good chance to see what we would get. We can taunt, we can power slam. We can Falling Swing, or we can Interrupt. Again, I'm not sure if you're allowed to keep a combo going once you've killed an enemy. So, we'll burn this, no, we'll burn this to move one. It's got a, a move one on it, to pick up this red gem. And then we'll do Nero's once per turn move, to make him there, and pick up this gem. And then we'll just, we'll just do a name shot. Bang. He's dead. We lose one gem that he drops because it stays there and we pick up two more so in total that's the end of the combat two four six eight ten we earned 11 gems and then we go to this far left deck which are all cards that add combos that's a very powerful one and they all have a cost in the bottom right so I'm going to look through these now and I'm going to spend the 11 gems and then we're ready to move on to the level 1 encounter. So here's how I've decided to spend those red orbs. Cost of 1, I got a roulette spin. For a cost of 3, I got a cyclone, which is a combo finisher on a blue chain. Gerbera, which is another one of his devil arms and also it counts as a basic attack so it will not be shuffled into the deck, it just becomes an option like Overture is. Blade Flourish for two, which is just a basic attack, but it can be part of any chain, so it's just good for keeping a chain going. And then similarly, I bought two charge shots for two, which is a stronger bullet shot from his gun, but it also stuns, and I think stun might be more important. 
So that's that combat done. I'd already done that one off camera once to test how things are going. The others are going to be a surprise to me. So let's see what our level 1 encounter is because we've done the start. It's four normal impusas, not the red ones. And also a riot, which is this gentleman here, whose AI I don't know yet. So I'll get this set up and then we're good to go. Oh, and we have to draw two achievement cards. Again, I don't know if the previous one gets discarded. I don't think we're going to get the previous one, but we'll keep it in play and we'll just draw two more. It's, oh, Sharpshooter again. I did shovel these. And Stylish Fighter. Claim this if there's at least six cards in your combo. You can do that. So that's another couple of achievements in play. Let's get this set up. Oh, and I'll put those in the deck and shuffle them. So there we have Nero set up where I want him to be with two normal impusas behind and, and in front, behind and in front. And then over there, the large nasty riot. Here's their AI cards. Impusas only drop two red ones, but they only have five HP. You draw one AI card for the group. Riots, on the other hand, they drop two green orbs for healing, six red orbs. They have 25 HP. They've got a large attack radius, and they can't be stunned unless they have three or more stun markers on them. This is my initial hand. I drew it already. Not any or many attacks, just a charge shot, as you can see, which is pretty bad. So not looking great. He's still got one damage on him, but if we kill the riot, we can heal. Each green orb is, heals three health, I think. I'll double check if we need to. And we have an extra starting hand. We have Gerbera as well. And I already know what I want to do, so we can just jump in and get started. I want to move and go one, two, three, four, five. Because I want to be as far away from the riot as possible, take out the trash and then take him on. And then we're going to start our combo by, let's see here, we could go all in on them and be nasty, but I don't know how nasty I want to be. Uh, we're going to use a wire snatch, which is move an enemy that's not large or gigantic up to four hexes towards you. So we're going to start with that and go one, two, three, and say, hey there, I now wish to destroy both of you, ideally. So I think we're going to start with an overture. Actually, wait, no, 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 no. We shall play Exceed so all of our sword attacks do plus one damage. Then we'll do an overture, which hits them both for two damage because it hits his front arc and left and right. So front arc is currently there. So both of them are being hit for three damage each. That means they have two left each. Boom and boom. And then we do want to keep the combo because that's, we'll keep Gibera. Uh Let's see. They've got two health left each. We've got a charge shot, that kills one of them. But we could also take a pot shot at the riot if we don't need to use that. So... Okay, hang on, we can make this work. We'll just do a rapid swing. But well, that makes it a blue chain though. That's okay, that's okay, we can still work with that. So we'll do a rapid swing. It would knock back, but because it's doing two damage, not one, it just outright kills this guy, and they only drop two red orbs, so Nero automatically picks up one, the other one's going to be in the square there. And then he's going to discard the other exceed in his hand so that he can shift, because I think to turn you also need to shift and that's got a movement value of one, so we'll discard that to shift so he's facing this Impusa with two health left, and it's got a blue chain. So the only thing you can do to kill it is use charge shot because one it, that only makes sword attacks do more damage. So he's killed this one as well. So that's two enemies he's killed this turn but he's only shot one and again he gets plus one red jewel. Another red jewel goes on the table right there. So then he's going to use his aim shot as his basic attack. He's going to shoot the riot for one damage. As far as I'm aware, there's not a range limitation for charge shots. And uh, that's all he can do. Yep, that's all he can do. We're saving a replenish to get Overture back next turn. So that's staying in our hand, or potentially to defend us if the right can get right over to us. I'm hoping it can, but it might. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Five is two points. Not much, but hey, we're at 11 points on the track. I'll get this cleaned up and then we'll draw an AI card for the Impusas and the Riot. 
So apologies, even though I didn't do Stylish Fighter or Sharpshooter, I actually did do Reaper. Claim this if you slay at least two enemies during your turn. He did. So Reaper goes with Sharpshooter and has been claimed. Let's do the Riot first, because that's the more interesting of the two. Move the Riot four hexes towards the nearest Hunter. Stock Prey. I think we lucked out there. So that would be one. You move like as if you're moving one of the hexes. Two, three, four. He's stalking and he's surfing. So we got lucky there. Because I'm pretty sure they do a minimum of four damage, which is really bad. And then the Impusas, which act together. Each Impusa that's adjacent to Hunter attacks him. Well, they can't. Move the others two towards the nearest Hunter. One, two. One, two. Simple as that. We'll get that on the bottom of the deck. And that takes us to whether or not I want to get rid of the Replenish, which I don't, because I want to use it to get Overture back. So we're drawing four cards. So that's one of the new ones. Color up. Discard this card when making a ranged attack to make it... Oh, that would have been great with Charge Shot. It would have done five damage. Color up again. Oh, well. We'll save one for dodging, I suppose. Then Aerial Strike. That doesn't give us much to work with. Alright, give me a chance to think through my turn. So I don't think we're going to have a great turn this turn, but we're going to use Replenish to get back Overture as an option. And then we're going to use our 6 movement to get into position now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's not going to be enough. Do we go after the Riot? Do we just go for him? Um, He is the biggest threat. Could we get to him? One, two, three, four, easily, and pick up the two red orbs as well. Ideally, I could get around the side of him as well, so he'd have to turn. Uh, I double checked if you're using an AoE attack and multiple hit a monster with multiple hexes, you pick which one of the hexes that hit him to apply the damage from. You don't add it up, sadly. Uh, and also, for each point of movement they have, they can either turn instead or pivot rather than advance, so they do have to turn to face you, and that uses up some of their movement if they move after you. So, I think we'll do. One, two, to get those two red orbs picked up. And then go three, four, five, and turn. And we'll say, hello there, large nasty lizard thing. We're going to attack you now. And we're going to try and stun you, ideally. We want to do a blue chain combo. We're going to start with a name shot for one damage, but we're going to discard color up to also do two damage. So that's three on top of the one he already has. So there's three damage to get us started. Then we're gonna do Gerbera, which is another one damage, and that applies one stun, but we need to get three on him to actually make him be stunned. Uh, and the one damage, that brings him to five in total. We'll need those in a second, ideally. So five damage, only 20 more to go, ha ha ha. Then, do we go straight into Overture? Do we go all... We're going all out. We're using Overture even just to keep the combo going as well. So that's another two damage. So there's five, six, seven. There's two more damage. And then... We want to do... We could link into High Roller, but that would take us to Green. We don't have a finisher for Green. We want to go to Blue, which means we do Rapid Swing. Yeah, yeah, we do rapid swing. We do rapid swing, so that's one more damage. Take the two away and put in the three. It also knocks them back. So we're gonna go like that, I guess, and Nero will follow. And then he'll end his combo with the Cyclone, which in the central facing does three more damage. Now, did I apply the one? I don't think I applied the one for rapid swing. There's the three, and there's the one. There's actually a ten uh, damage marker I didn't have ready, so I'll do that in a second. That also applies a second stun, but you need three to make a misses turn, unfortunately. So, we can't do anything else because the chain has to end there, so that is a one, two, three, four, five chain for two. Two points. We're ending our turn with an arrow strike and a color up so we can defend twice or two damage, which is just as well because he is going to get his turn. And yeah, that's it. So, clean up. This comes back with Jabera, or Gibera rather, an overture are gone. We might get another card that brings them back. 
that gets discarded. We have those two in reserve. So, uh, yeah, let me look at the 10 damage before we do the enemy turn. So the damage is applied, and as far as I can tell, the stun markers, they just evaporate because the minimum was not met to make the riot miss his turn. So he gets a turn. Spinning Assault. Move the riot four hexes towards the nearest hunter, then make this attack. Each hunter that is hit must discard a card from their hand at random before dodging. So he's just going to turn. And then he's going to turn. And then he's going to... Well, I guess turn a third time, so his front facing is there. Bring the damage around here. His front facing is doing three damage, so again, I believe you only... Yeah, well, hunters are only one wise, so... You have to discard a card before dodging. Discard Aero Strike. And then we'll use Colour Up to dodge, so Nero takes two damage, which puts him at a total of three damage out of his six health, I think it was. But if we kill the Riot, we get health back. So here's hoping, but that is, that's vicious. If you do go down, you keep fighting, you don't, you don't die forever, but you go back to the start of the previous layer. So in other words, if we do die before crossing this line, we go back to zero. If we die here, we go back to here. So it's not as bad, but still pretty bad. Impuzzles. Move each three hexes towards the nearest hunter and then may make this attack. One, two, three. Get in there. And then one, two, three. He's not going to get in there, unfortunately. For them, that is. So he's just going to sit there. The other one, however, is attacking for one. Nero can't do anything about it, so he takes one more damage. Very nasty. That's one more damage. He's at four out of six. He's surrounded. The enemy's still got like 13 health left. He needs to draw a full hand. Let's see what we get. Swing wide. Blade strike. We've got a blue combo. Oh wow, we actually do have a blue combo going here. Wow. Okay, and we've got a taunt. Let me think about this. So we have the prospects of a blue combo here. And that's exactly what we're going to start with, although the chain starts yellow. So we're going to do one damage to the riot. Now that would knock back and allow us to follow up, however it would get caught in this mob, so I presume you can't. But I might be wrong about that. But we're going to play, we, you can follow up anyway, so it's not going to change what we're doing. We're going all in on the, uh, the riot here. So then we're going to immediately follow Rapid Swing by Falling Swing. It hits f Nero's front arc and to his left, so sadly because he's facing that way it's only hitting the right again. That's one more damage thrown in for good measure. Then we're going to do a Blade Arc, which again attacks the left side, because... That doesn't make sense, does it? Does he use his sword in his left hand? I don't remember if Nero's left-handed. Either way. But it is hitting his top left, so we take the highest damage. So that's two more damage. So if we just take away a 1 and put a 3 in instead, that's two more additional damage for now, just to keep things right. Then we're immediately following that up with a Blade Swing for 2 damage. So we'll take away a 3 and add a 5. And it also adds a stun, but we're not going to get to enough of a stun. I already planned it ahead. And then we're going to come down with a Swing. And that does hit his entire front arc, so it does also do 1 damage to this Impusa, because it's in this front arc. It does one damage to the riot. Then we're going to do an aim shot to finish off. And that's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Now we take him to 20. Yeah, let's do it on him. So we'll put him at 20. And we'll say thank you very much. We will now bank this. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six cards. It means we score three. One, two, three. We're over the threshold, which might be important in the coming turn. And um, we haven't moved. So what Nero's going to do is one, two, three, four, five, six. He is backing off because he wants to live. So yeah, we're saving a taunt which can block three damage. Not going to use it. I didn't fully understand the text for taunt to be honest. I read it a couple of times and didn't understand it. Uh, so basic attacks come back. These get discarded. We were very lucky to get nothing but blue chains there. So they get put in the discard pile. The riot. Move six hexes towards the nearest hunter and then do four damage. So, one, two, three, and then he's going to turn for four. He can't get close enough. Because you do have to, you have to make the monsters try, and, and but for large monsters, turning costs a movement. 
they, they can't get a pardon me they can't get a free movement so that's as close as they could get hopefully you're, you are allowed to just back off from monsters if you haven't used your one move yet and pusses uh, move them two towards the nearest hunter one two I should probably double check if they're allowed to turn without. I think I think only large monsters have to pay a move, whereas smaller monsters don't. I will double check because I need to draw new cards. And well, once I draw the new cards, because I need to stop each turn to think about what I want to do with my turn. We want to kill the riot this turn, that's for sure. And um, we're going to discard taunt and take a full hand of five. And then another exceed. That's good. Another aim shot. Blade arc. Split. Which is a combo ender and blade flourish which can link into anything not a lot of damage on offer other than the green combo ender hmm so as we begin this turn i believe my last combo i just did was six cards long i think it was so we're going to claim that if that's wrong subtract two from my final score so for nero's turn he is going to go one two three into there into there yeah into there we want to kill we want to do five damage we're going to use exceed so his sword attacks do plus one damage for the turn first of all and then we're going to start with a blade flourish which is an any link so it does actually maybe you can't because that's yellow and it doesn't have yellow on it hmm okay well in that case we'll do rapid swing then rapid swing for one damage and he's gonna get moved back so how would you move him back I guess you'd move him there, and he will follow up. So that does one damage. It's got four. Oh no, sorry, it does two damage. So he has three left. Then he'll do blade flourish for one damage. It becomes two, and then he'll aim shot, and that does five, and he dies. So when he dies, he drops two green orbs, and six red orbs you have to make sure that at least one orb is on every hex he possessed so two 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 and i'm going to say the green ones land on nero and each one heals him for three so that puts him back to full health which is much needed but all those other ones are just going to sit there the right is killed Combo isn't necessarily over because we could always turn. Uh, we've got a silver chain which is currently a blue chain. Um, well, we might as well do the aim shot and just do one more damage to the Impusa that's... Oh, I knocked the whole board there. As we do one more damage to the Impusa that has one damage on him because why not? Also, apologies if you can hear the construction road construction work going on in the background um let's see he could go all in now that he's full health he could sh uh, no because he's one away he's right there he'll spend the split and discard it to shift one just to pick up those hexes uh, those red orbs and that is going to be his turn so he only scored four which is a measly one point on the board oops but that's okay he's on 17 Basic attack comes back, basic attack comes back, those get discarded, this gets discarded, and Blade Arc stays in his hand to dodge one damage from the only enemy left on the field, which is the Impusas. Move each three towards the Hunter. Alright, these are literally just... Again, I'm not sure what you're supposed to do if a monster lands on these hexes, but... Hey. They're in there, but they don't want to attack, so we'll just say they shoved them there and there. So, we'll save Blade Arc, we'll hold it in our hands, we draw four more cards. Charge Shot, Strategize, Roulette Spin, and another Aim Shot. So we're hopefully going to just end this this turn, but Nero's going to move, he's going to go one, two, three, four, and immediately go back just to pick up those four orbs. So he's, he, has, he has moved, but I'm not going to bother doing it because he's ending up right where he is. And then he's going to start swinging, so he's going to go for High Roller which is one damage to the Impusa who is not damaged and will stun him so he doesn't get to act this turn if he lives, which hopefully oops, hopefully he will not. 
So there's one damage, and then we're going to immediately drop that into a roulette spin, which is going to hit each of them for two damage. So that's three in total on that one, and four in total on that one. And then he's going to do an aim shot at the one that's got one health and kill it. And then he's going to do a charge shot and kill the other one as well. Ending combat, but they do drop. Well, they would drop two on empty squares. He can't pick up. Uh, so the one would drop there, one would drop there, and each of them would drop one on him to pick up. Although I guess technically, even though the combos ended, you could still shift maybe before the turn ends. Like you could shift for one, shift for one. I'll say you can do that and pick those up. It's only a four combo to finish, so it's just a measly one point. But the combat does end. And we have two, four, oops, six, eight, ten, twelve red orbs to spend on new cards. So here's my purchases. Five for Punchline, which is a basic attack, but it's another one where it's a one-time use for the fight and then you flip it over, but it gives Nero a lot more movement. One for a Blade Strike, one for a Whirlwind, so we're going for Blue Chains. One for a swing wide and three for another replenish, banking one on spent one, which presumably you carry over. Let's I'll shuffle those into the deck after we see what we're fighting in our level two encounter. We're fighting two Hell Antonoras and five Red Impuses, and we also draw three achievement cards. Uh, if this is the third stage, shuffle the challenging achievement cards back into the deck before dealing any out. I'll do that in a second then. So the combat for level 2 is set up, we need 3 achievement cards, I've shuffled in the challenging ones, stylish fighter, combo of at least 6, then we have style overload, 10 cards in a combo chain, and then claim this if you slay the boss, so that must stay in effect then, because the boss isn't even on this floor, it's on the next floor, but it's a challenging card, so I shuffled it in like I was told to. So uh, I didn't pick where Nero was going to start, he's going to start and that of one of his starting square, I've already drawn my starting hand, swing wide, replenish, blade, arc, falling blade, colour up. And obviously we have a bunch of basic cards now. And we're just going to jump straight in and try and go a little bit faster. But first, Hell Antonora, they drop 1 health, 4 orbs, 12 health, and they need 2 stun markers to be stunned. Nero's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. Face this gentleman here, and he's going to do a rapid swing to start a combo. So it's 1 damage plus knockback. And follow up. These are the red Antonoras, so I've got to remember they have 7 health, of course. Um, then he's going to do a following swing for just 1 damage again and push him and follow. So we're going to try and do some damage across both of them here. So he's got 2 damage on him now. 2 damage. So we're going to do Swing Wide, Sweet Chariot, and that's going to do one damage to each of them. So we'll just move this one over here, because it's hit him for one. This one's up to three damage. And then we'll do Overture. It's going to do two damage to each of them. So that's up to five on him, three on him, and obviously Overture is gone now. And then we're going to go all in, I think. We're going to use Gibera, so even if I don't kill them now, they, those two don't get a turn. So that's six damage to this one, four damage to this one, and then... Uh, as my phone starts to ring, hang on a second. Sorry, as I was saying, uh, we'll use an aim shot to kill the one... Yeah, to kill the one with one health, so he's dead. Because he has one health left. We'll discard Replenish to get a turn, because I think you have to spend that to turn. I don't know if you're allowed to do that mid-combo. I hope you are. If I'm doing that wrong, I apologise, because then we're going to finish with a Blade Arc. Though actually, you'd want to turn twice, but I don't know if you can do that. So we take him to five damage, we knock him back. I'm not going to follow him, because that's the end of the combo. Uh, so he's got 5 damage, was it? Yeah, I believe it was 5 damage. 
and that means we banked combo one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we get Stylish Fighter claimed, and seven scores us four points. One, two, three, four. We saved a color up as a defense card, and we still have Punchline in terms of fists that we can use in the fight, although there's an extra replenish in there now as well. And this Antonora got stunned, so he's not getting a turn. So one red orb was where the first enemy died and two have been picked up by Nero. Let's see what the red and Pusas are doing first. They're all moving three towards the nearest hunter and then shuffling. He isn't moving because he's stunned, so this one goes right in there. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then they hail Antonoras. Move them four hexes towards the nearest hunter. Okay. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. They are closing in. So we'll discard color up. Well, range attack might be good actually. No, we'll hold on to it. We'll hold on to it. I'll get those shuffled again in a second. So we're only going to draw four. Interrupt. Strategize. Oh no, we're not getting any attacks. Oh, we actually aren't. Oh no, this is terrible. Well, with a hand as bad as this, uh, you, you can't do much. Nero's going to do an aim shot with a color up to do two extra damage because that does three, he only needs to do two to kill him. And then one's gonna land there, and two are gonna land there, because Nero is going to uh, grab those. Is there anything else he wants to do? Not really, what does Interrupt do? Into their combo chain, but before they resolve it, move up to three hexes. Oh right, you interrupt your combo to move and keep attacking. It's actually not that bad, but I think there's nothing else to be done. So well, those are gone because the enemy is gone. He'll just move his six movement. So one pick up, two, three, four, five, six. He'll hide over here. He'll pick up those for spending as I just drop one on the floor. And he saves these for defense, obviously, which is just as well because then he wants to discard some of them when the enemies take their turn as well. Uh, and we'll jump straight into that. I guess we'll do we'll do the Hell Antonors first. Lumber fourth again. I, I did shuffle them. Four hexes. One, two, three. He's in there. One, two, three, four. And then the Impuzas. Move towards uh, move two hexes because there's no one adjacent. One, two. One, two. One, two. They are closing in. And they didn't attack, so I just need to decide what to discard. Uh, we'll get rid of Interrupt because they're close enough anyway. We'll get rid of Strategize. Um, we'll get rid of Color Up and we'll keep Exceed. Because I think I want to do a lot of sword damage this turn. So we have one card. A basic attack comes back, so we need four cards. There's another Exceed. Could have just got rid of it. Blade Strike. Wire Stretch. Oh no. Okay, well this could have been so perfect if he'd had a bunch of attacks, but it doesn't, so we're just going to have to make do with what we have. So we're going to do aim shot, followed by aim shot, for two damage into the Hell Intonora in front of him. Grab the two icons here. There's two damage into him, and then we're going to do a rapid swing for another one damage, plus a pushback and a follow up. We're going to sneak around after we're done comboing, is the plan. So that's three damage done to him currently. We can throw in a. We might as well throw in a wire stretch, I guess. Let's throw in a wire stretch just to get combo points. Move an enemy that's not large or gigantic up to four hexes. One, two. And then we're going to do a blade swing for two more damage. It does stun, but they need two stuns, so it's irrelevant. And then that's going to take him to 5 out of his 12 damage already. Not bad. And we can't do anything else because we can't link that to blue. We could punch line, but we're just going to do a move instead. And go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And hide in the corner and hope that they can't get to us. And on that subject, we'll just uh, jump straight to it. So that's a combo of 5. So we do get 2 points. I hope I for uh, Did I forget my points last turn? It's very possible I did. Wait, no, we only had a combo of like 3 need to have at least four to get points. So those come back. 
There was the scarred. I totally forgot to use one of the exceeds. Can I retcon that a little bit? We only did um, two sword attacks, but that would be three. Yeah, it would be two more damage. I totally forgot I was going to use one of those. So he's actually got seven damage, so that's discarded. We'll save one exceed for defense. Those all get discarded. Let's see what the hell Antonora do. Move it two hexes towards the nearest hunter and then make this attack. One, two. He's out of range. Ah, they're in the way. Uh, one, two, I guess he would come in. He'd come in there, so he can't do that attack, which is just as well, because that's nasty. And then the red and Puzas close in, move them towards three and then shuffle. One, two, three. One, two, three, I guess. He would go there, try and keep that damage where it's supposed to be. And one, two, three. You're supposed to do it so that every single hex move has to be towards the target. So we didn't need exceed, but I'm going to hold on to it for sword damage in the hopes that we'll actually draw some sword attacks here. So we draw four. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you... Okay, that's not bad. Are you continuing to kidding... Oh, this is not great though. Alright, I have a plan. We're going to use one of the exceeds. So plus one sword damage. We'll just put that over there. Plus one sword damage for the turn. We're going to use punchline. So four movement. And then that's going to flip for the fight. That's just to get us over here for free because I'm liking this hit and run strat. We want our front facing against him, right facing there. And then we're going to open with rapid swing, which will do two damage, not one. It would knock him back, but he can't be knocked back because he's in the way. Again, if, if that's wrong and they're both supposed to be pushed back, my bad. As far as I'm aware, if there's an obstruction, they don't, but I might be wrong. So that's two damage, so we'll take away a one and put a three in. Putting him at nine. And then we'll immediately do... Well, actually, we don't need to immediately do anything because we can shoot other targets. Okay, hang on. We'll do an aimed shot. We'll do that on the Impusa that's going to get smacked in a second. So we'll do it on him. One damage on him. We'll do the charge shot on the Impusa that we just hit as well. And that stuns him so he doesn't get a turn. It does three damage, putting him at four out of seven plus the stun. Then, again, because you can hit 360 degrees with a, an attack, we'll end with a power slam, which does push back and stun. So it would do four damage to him, but it actually does five, taking him above his health cap, so he's dead. He's gone. And it would hit his square for one, but it would actually do two, so that puts him at six out of seven health, annoyingly. He doesn't get a turn, though. And we'll bank the taunt and the other exceed. So that's only a five card combo, that's two score. One, two, it does put us in the B. So that's not too bad. Oh, and of course, the L Antonora drops one green herb. Green herb, wrong game, <laughs> wrong IP. One green orb and four red orbs which we're going to say Nero has picked up because they landed in his square because he's only one hex wide. That might also be wrong but hey it's solo mode. So this gets discarded, it's been used up, aim shot goes back, rapid swing goes back, punchline that's it for the fight, our three devil breakers are gone. These get discarded and for our defense we have the, oh we haven't done our move yet, sorry sorry sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hit and run tactics. Hit and run tactics, and you don't get a turn. Uh, let's do the Antonora first, because they're they're there. Two towards the nearest hunter. One, two. One, two. Simple. And then the Hell Antonora. Move towards the nearest hunter. Three. One, two, three. And he can't do anything either. We're going to get rid of... Both of these, no, I'm going to keep the Exceed, because I think that's the last in the deck, and draw four, and they better be attacks. Okay, we're, we're go okay, good, excellent, okay, this is looking very nice, in fact. Very nice, very nice, and okay, can't use that, but that's fine. Okay, it's time for Nero to shine. He's going to play the Exceed, so sword attacks are all doing plus one damage. He is going to move in, one, two, three, four, 
5 when he's going to have his front facing this gentleman and then he's going to immediately do an aim shot to do 1 damage and kill him because he had 6 so that's his 7th bit of damage done and I'm running out of red orbs there we are so he's going to drop one there and give two to Nero. I forgot that there's big orbs worth ten that I could be using instead, but oh well. So then he's going to follow that up with a rapid swing for two damage and a push back and follow. Say, hey, I ain't done with you yet. So that's two damage, not one. And then this is where the fun starts. And he's going to do a blade strike for three, not two. And we get a text message, apologies. Uh, so that is three, so that would be five damage, two text messages in popular. Five damage plus stun, but I don't think stun's going to matter because I'm pretty sure it's going to be dead. Then it's going to be blade arc. Yeah, mm, yeah, Blade Arc, which is actually done enough to kill him, but it does push back and move. And I do have to keep facing him, but hey, he's dead. So again, there's supposed to be, I'm going to have to empty out some gems, one on the table, two in inventory. Done, done. And then he will do Cyclone to finish. Now because of the facing, that is only going to do one damage, but it does double his combo. Well, it does two damage, sorry, because of the exceed. So two damage to this Hell Antonora. Aerial Strike gets kept for defense, exceed gets used up, that's one, two, three, four, five cards. Five would normally be two, but because we finished it with a finisher, we double it, so we get four. One, two, three, four, we're bang on thirty. So aerial uh, aim shot rather and rapid swing come back. This and exceed, they all go in the discard pile. And then the Hell Antonor is probably going to get to attack this turn. Move towards the hunter for two. Oh, I did, did I do my move? Yes, I did. He'll just turn and face the hunter and he shall smack them for three. We'll use the aerial strike to counter the one so Nero takes two damage. Don't worry, that's why there's a green orb on the floor still. Green orb, uh, sorry, what am I saying? Two damage. And then the red Impusa close in again. It's right in there. Pardon me. We have no cards in our hand. One, two, three, four, five. Alright, so we know what we're doing. First of all, we're spending Replenish, discarding it to flip over one of our Devil Breakers. We're going to take, no, sorry, not Punchline. Uh, yeah, this one. We want Overture. We're going to use our movement to turn and face, yeah, let's face the tough one. So ideally we want to heal. And then we're going to open our combo with Overture. So that's two damage to each of them. So that takes him to four, and then I ran out of number one icons annoyingly. We'll just have to try and remember he's got one damage on him for now because he's about to go up anyway. Then we'll use charge shot for three more damage. So we'll take two of those away, put in a five, and that means we can do a, a one on him. And then we'll do an aim shot on him to put the one back because I don't have any other threes apparently. Oh no, there. No wonder I don't. They're sitting right here. So five and a three on him now and then do we want to start our combo yet I don't know we want to do a green combo this turn so yes we shall do high roller for one damage and then we shall do blade flourish because that just carries across he's got oh he has two stun on him so he actually isn't getting a turn I forgot the charge shot does stun as well so no stun and uh, no turn for the hell I'm to this turn uh, that did one more damage, which I didn't add on, I think. So that's going to take us to another five. He has two health left. And we shall finish the combo with a split, which does four damage, more than enough, to murderize him. 
for one, two, three, four, five, six cards, and you double them because I scored that. So normally it would be three, it's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're at 36. We save the Whirlwind for defense. That was a very effective turn. He drops Healy Dealies, of course. I'm going to say the Healy Dealie dropped on Nero just to save me picking one up so that he's healed. And then, you can see, at least one has to go on the Hex that he was spawned on. So we'll say that. And one more. Come on, give me the one more from the bag. There we are. We'll say that's there, and Nero has healed from the green herb that he dropped as well. So, basic attacks. Overture's gone again. But, aim shot, high roller. These get discarded. I'm gonna have to be careful where the points are now. It's, it's overlapping where I've. It's uh, not quite enough space, as you may have realised. So, only the Red and Pusa. You have to shuffle it every time, and there's only three cards in this deck, or four, I think, so it's no wonder it keeps getting this. It does nothing. Straight over to the next turn, and we still need to draw. We have a Whirlwind. Um, I'll hold on to it. We'll draw four. This should be the last turn, and then we're on to the boss. We just need to do six damage. And that's looking very doable. So this is a really easy turn for Nero. One, two, three, four, five, six. Front facing Dempusa. He's picked up all of these to buy upgrades before the boss because the boss is next. And that'll be tough, I imagine. It's a one on one fight. And then he's just going to utterly destroy this thing. He needs to do seven damage. One, two, oops, three, four with a knockback and fall, but it doesn't matter. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It just got eviscerated and he will drop two of his three that Nero can pick up for the stage ends. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. That would be four points. One, two, three, four puts us exactly at 40. And that does end the combat. And there is only one boss in the core box. It is the Elder Garen Knight. He starts in the middle. And we need to do a bunch of achievement cards, etc get that set up after doing some spending on cards for the final encounter. So we're set up and ready to go but here's the purchases I made. Rank time for 5 which is another one use hand. Blade for flourish for 2, 2 shuffles for 2 each and a replenish for 3. There is a bunch I didn't spend but I didn't want to fill the deck with stuff that isn't relevant like collecting more red orbs. Red orbs no longer matter at this point so those are going to get shuffled in to my initial draw deck. Here's the Elder Grey Knight stat card. Because we're doing solo, it's got 45 HP. He can't be stunned, and any damage he takes is reduced to one, or sorry, reduced by one to a minimum of one. We need six objective or achievement cards. Claim this if you deal seven damage with a single attack. Claim this if you dodge at least four. Claim this if you deal five or more in a hit. Claim this if you slay an enemy that has another hunter in its front arc, but we ain't doing that one. Style Master, eight cards in a combo, and then finally, Claim this if you slay... Oh, another one we can't do, so I'll just get rid of the saviour ones and we'll get set up. He spawns in the middle of the map. Nero's going to start in front of him as far as I'm aware. And we're good to go. So as we get started here, what I should have done was leave Nero wherever he ended the final fight because the boss just spawns out of the middle. So I did that wrong when I moved him and I don't remember where he was. But he's just going to move into combat anyway. So here's his initial hand. It's not a great hand, I will say that. But we're going to come out swinging and hopefully do a lot of damage. So we're going to do... One, it doesn't get reduced. I see we're going to do a lot of damage and then I do one damage. Then we're going to do ragtime for two. And then that would also let me draw a card and add it to my hand. Uh, return this card to basic attack, take it here and flip it down. Okay, so we get a Nero strike. So that's two damage. I'm going to do Gerbera for three. Overtime for four, five. Uh... Rapid swing for six plus a knockback, but I don't think that particularly matters in a follow up. So that's six, and then I guess just swing mode for seven. That was all single damage, so that doesn't 
get reduced. There's no point using the exceed because it would just bring a two back down to one. So we did seven damage. Five, six, seven. The stuns don't matter because he's immune to stun. So we did seven out of his 45 HP. That's not terrible. It's almost 20%. We did one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's three points on the bar. One, two, three. Did we get any for doing six? Uh, deal five or more damage? Yep, we earned this. We didn't quite get anything else, but we earned that. I'll put that in my earned pile. And we've got a bunch that we can burn for defense. Let's see what he does. Each hunter within three hexes of the Gracian Knight suffers four damage. Hunters adjacent to the... Oh, sorry, within three. Any that are adjacent are not back two hexes. Remove ten damage from the Elder Knight. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, so he's one, two, three. He heals for ten. I'm just gonna not do the heal for ten. This is so that it's competitive for someone else to get the kill shot. We're doing solo, I ain't gonna heal. So nuts to that. But I am gonna take the four damage, but we're gonna use strategize and strategize and color up to counter the damage so we don't take anything. So that gets discarded. We're gonna flip over all of our cards that we use there that are one time useful, so we can flip one back at least. Our basic attacks come back. Swing mode gets discarded and of these we're going to get rid of aerial strike because I don't think green combos are Nero's thing so we draw three. A replenish, falling swing, swing wide. Well we're immediately going to spend the two replenishes to get back two devil triggers and we'll get back the two that are damaging so overture and ragtime. Uh, over, ragtime and Overture, yes, that's what I meant to say. And then... And goes back in his the base of his shuffled deck. He's got quite a big AI deck. So Nero's going to use his move to get back in there. And start swinging again. So let's see, what can we do? We want a blue combo this time. Aim shot for one. Overture brings it to three. Ragtime brings it to four and we draw an extra card. Perfect. So that's four. There's five plus a knockback. That would only matter if you're fighting with other people as well, I feel, knocking him back. So that's five, six, seven, eight. That's eight damage. And then, oh, I can't make it 10, I can make it nine. Now nah, we'll leave it eight cards and save punchline. So that's, that was quite much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That was eight damage. Yeah, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll take away the two and put a 10 in. 15 damage dealt. Across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. Oh, I could actually no. Let's make it eight to claim. So I just move four hexes. We're going to go one, two, three. We're going to go around him, so he has to turn ideally, and that means we can claim the Style Master for playing eight cards in one turn. We also move six on the board. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. So we've got one exceed in the bank. Here's what he's doing. Move eight hexes passing through occupied hexes. It must not end within three hexes of a hunter. If this is not possible, you must end this move as far away as possible, then draw another card. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess it would just, yeah, it's cantering. So then you draw another card. Move him eight hexes towards the nearest hunter with the most style points passing through occupied hexes and then make this attack. So it would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He can't reach because he just cantered away. Why would you canter away to then do a thundering charge that far? So he does nothing. Uh, we're going to save the exceed, I guess, and draw uh, four. One, two, three, four. Four. 
All right, we've got Nero's turn planned out. I must admit this final two fights took a lot longer than I expected and this is going to take a while to die. He's of course going to go in because he wouldn't. Why wouldn't he rather? He'll use that and then use color up to do another one. It would do two, but it gets brought down to one. So that's two and then three and then three because that would come back down. So that adds up to six damage. Uh, there's nothing else you can do. We'll save those for defense. So six damage combo of three does nothing, but it does six damage. So he So we'll bring away the five and add a ten and a one. So he's at 21 damage out of the 45 And then we immediately go to him drawing a card because we've got no style points Turn the Elder Grey Knight so that he is uh, faces as many hunters as possible Then it makes this attack with the target the closest three hunters. Okay, it's a ranged attack Shuffle the deck after returning this card to the bottom. So it's going to do six damage. Nero's going to burn all three of these cards and dodge six damage, which in turn, claim this if he dodged at least four, scores that achievement. He has no, I'll shuffle that again in a second. No cards in his hand. These two basic ones go back. This gets dumped. So he draws five. Three. Okay, there's his five. All right, here we go. Move first. One, two, three, four, five, six. Why do that? Well, he's going to start his combo with a wire chain, and if it's on a gigantic enemy, he gets moved towards it by four. So one, two, just to have his central facing on his back. So hopefully he has to waste a lot of his turn moving. So that's going to start the combo, and then we're going to do aim shot for one damage. Aim shot for two damage. Charge shot for 4 damage, because it gets brought down, in total I mean, 4 in total, and then 5, 6, 7 damage. Can't do anything else, that's 7 damage done, 5, we'll take away the 1 out of 3, so we're up to 25, 6, 7, 8, 28 damage, and that's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 combo for 4 points. One, two, three, four. Putting this on 53. And nothing for defense. That's the dangerous part. Let's see what we get. Move the move eight hexes towards the nearest hunter with most stylish points and then do this attack. So you would go one, two, three. Hello, Nero. He does eight damage, so he just actually straight up kills Nero. So right back to there. And then he doesn't do anything else and it just rolls around to my turn again, as far as I'm aware. But that's that's pretty hard, it's just an insta-kill. If you don't have any defense, I guess I should have expected that. But we'd already seen it, but I shuffled the deck. And wasn't taking that into consideration. We can still get a bunch of achievement points at the end, once he's dead. And still, the kill shot for him is 10 on its own. I'm going to have to end up shuffling these back in soon. Well, maybe not, we're like halfway through the, the draw deck. So we need 5 of these. 1. I guess we're doing a green combo. Three, four, five. All right, super simple turn for Nero. One damage, oops. Two damage, three damage. That becomes six damage and it becomes two extra points. That's six damage done to him. So that's six on. I'll make the points look more efficient. He's almost dead, that's what, 34? So he's got 11 health left. Not too bad. Uh, saving four points worth of defense. And he's hitting back with a land sweep. Move him, he doesn't need to move. So he's hitting Nero for five damage. Nero will counter that for four. So he takes one on his new life. So he's got five health left. And then we roll back round with nothing in his hand because all this got used. Oh wait, no, yeah, sorry, all of it got used because he used it on defense. So five more cards. One, two, three, four, five. All right, I don't think we can kill him this time, but I think next time we can. We're looking to do a blue combo. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, uh, five, six seven eight nine 
nine damage. So five, six, seven, eight. Nine damage. Uh, he's going to bank that for one, two, three, four, five, six. Six points is three. One, two, three. And then he's going to move one, two, three, four, five, six. To see if that makes any difference. To We need to weather this blow without dying, ideally. Um, let's see. We do, we do that much. That's another ten, right? Five, four, five. Yes. Unfortunately, I don't have another ten again. Fine, we'll just do two fives. So that's 30, 43. He has two health left. He is dead next turn. It's just whether or not he can kill Nero one more time first. Each hunter within three hexes suffers four damage. Eight within three. Hunters adjacent are knocked back. Remove ten damage. Again, we're not doing that. That heal exists only to make it in question who gets the kill shot if you're doing multiplayer, in my opinion. So we ain't doing it because this is already taking a bit longer than I thought it would. So... All that gets banked. Uh, we didn't need to get rid of the exceed, but I'm going to discard it because we just need to do damage. Taunt isn't a good start. Blade strike, that's fine. Oop, I accidentally got a shuffle there. How much did we need to do? We needed to do five, was it? I think we've already done that. How much was it? That was no two. Oh, we've already done it. <laughs> one, two, three, four. Get in there, and then shoot him for one. Not taunt him. Not taunt him. There's the two damage to kill him. I, I don't know if we can get to keep our combo going, but there's one more damage, and then one more damage. I don't think you get to keep the combo going, so what, he'd be dead after the first two. So, as a combo of two, that doesn't score any points, but we do get Demon Slayer, which is 10 achievement points for uh, killing the boss. He has been defeated, that was tough. So we get 10 for that, and then we also have this bunch. So that's, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 25, 6, 7, 8, 28. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Well, would you look at that? Nero's score for the solo playthrough of the Bloody Palace is 69 points. So that is going to do it for Nero's time in the Bloody Palace. Now, my hope is to do at least one playthrough of this. Unpainted miniatures, which I know is a negative, but uh, just to play it for the sake of playing it now, regardless of painted or not. But once with each of the main box playable characters, see how they do, see if they get to the Elder Grey and Knight and do better than Nero did. There's a score to beat on the scoreboard now for V, Dante and Trish and Lady, if we use the expansion as well. Could technically factor in other bosses from the expansions and the expansion content to vary up the potential fights because each level has three variations other than the start which only has two and if you're playing solo you're limited because the harder fights have way too many enemies for a solo person to to handle so let me know if you want to see more of this first of all and secondly of all if you want me to mix in the potential expansions which will give you a few alternative final bosses and some more tier one to three encounters let me know. Thanks very much for watching. I sincerely hope you enjoyed. See you in the future. Ta-ta for now.